at your shop today, only at Value City Furniture. Good morning, America. Breaking overnight, Judge Brett Kavanaugh's accuser, Dr. Christine Blasey Ford, now says she won't testify until the FBI investigates her claim that Kavanaugh sexually assaulted her in high school. I feel so badly for him that he's going through this. Now, Anita Hill demanding lawmakers get it right this time. She's here only on GMA. Also breaking overnight, what North Korean leader Kim Jong-un just committed to the fate of a key missile test facility as he and South Korea's leader pledged to make a joint bid to host the Olympics. President Trump heading to the storm zone this morning to meet the victims of Hurricane Florence. The death toll climbing and warnings still in effect. Rivers rising, dams in danger of failing. Now the pregnant mother and her family who clung to trees for hours take us inside their incredible rescue. The surgeon once named Bachelor of the Year on reality TV now facing charges. He and his girlfriend accused of drugging and sexually assaulting women. Authorities suspect they may have preyed on hundreds. And Sesame Street's secret? The new questions about Bert and Ernie and their relationship, what the show is saying this morning. Live in Times Square, this is GMA with Robin Roberts, George Stephanopoulos, and Michael Strahan. Good morning, America. Hope you're having a great morning so far. It is great to have Cecilia here with us this morning. Great to be here with you guys, my, my both of my friends. Uh, we've got a lot <laughs> coming up uh, right here on GMA. Anita Hill is standing by for that exclusive. We all, of course, remember her powerful testimony decades ago. We will be hearing what she's saying this morning about that Supreme Court showdown. And Cecilia, this comes after a new move overnight by Judge Kavanaugh's accuser, Dr. Christine Blasey Ford. Her lawyer sent a letter to the Senate Judiciary Committee requesting an FBI investigation before she testifies. The GOP is standing firm against that plan for now. Our senior national correspondent, Terry Moran, tracking all the latest from the Supreme Court. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, George. So it's a stalemate. The Senate Judiciary Committee, controlled by Republicans, is determined to move forward with that hearing next Monday to investigate the charges that Judge Brett Kavanaugh sexually assaulted Professor Christine Blasey for decades ago. Dr. Ford won't be there, she says, unless the FBI investigates her charges first. Uh, meanwhile, Judge Kavanaugh has been at the White House getting grilled in mock hearings, preparing for this showdown. But right now, with both sides battling to shape the process, it looks like it may never take place. Overnight, Christine Blasey Ford's attorney announced that she will not testify at an open hearing Monday about her allegations of sexual assault against Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh unless certain conditions are met. In a letter addressed to Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley, Blasey Ford's attorney writes, while Dr. Ford's life was being turned upside down, you and your staff scheduled a public hearing for her to testify at the same table as Judge Kavanaugh to relive this traumatic and harrowing incident. An FBI investigation of the incident should be the first step in addressing her allegations. For the last 48 hours, she has been deflecting death threats and harassment. If the senators who have come forward and said they want to treat this seriously mean that, then they'll, they'll have an investigation of these allegations. Senator Grassley responding in a statement overnight. The invitation for Monday still stands. Nothing the FBI or any other investigator does would have any bearing on what Dr. Ford tells the committee, so there is no reason for any further delay. President Trump has the authority to ask the FBI to open an investigation, but he claims the FBI doesn't want to do it. I don't think the FBI really should be involved because they don't want to be involved. If they wanted to be, I would certainly uh, do that. But as you know, they say this is not really their thing. The president instead raising concerns over the personal toll all this is taking on his nominee. I feel so badly for him. This is not a man that deserves this. Not mentioning Blasey Ford by name. Hopefully the woman will come forward, state her case. He will state his case before representatives of the United States Senate. And then they will vote. They will look at his career. They will look at what she had to say from 36 years ago, and we will see what happens. The chaos comes after Blasey Ford, seen here in this yearbook photo from the period when she claims Kavanaugh assaulted her, told the Washington Post that around that time, a stumbling drunk Kavanaugh forced her into a bedroom. 
She said he pinned her to a bed, groped her, and tried to remove my clothing, telling the post when she tried to scream, he put his hand over her mouth, but she managed to escape. On Tuesday, Kavanaugh's friend Mark Judge, who Blasey Ford says was in the room during the alleged incident, defended Kavanaugh's character in a letter to the committee, writing, I have no memory of this alleged incident. Brett Kavanaugh and I were friends in high school, but I do not recall the party. More to the point, I never saw Brett act in the manner Dr. Ford describes. Blasey Ford's story carries the echoes of Anita Hills, who faced a tumultuous hearing 27 years ago after she made sexual harassment allegations against then-nominee Clarence Thomas, who repeatedly denied them and was confirmed to the Supreme Court. On several occasions, Thomas told me graphically of his own sexual prowess. Lawmakers are hoping not to repeat their past mistakes when the all-male panel grilled Anita Hill in excruciating detail. The specter of what happened in those explosive hearings back in 1991 is looming over Washington right now. Republicans remember how they were blasted for their cluelessness and insensitivity, and Democrats remember that Clarence Thomas made it to the Supreme Court. George. Okay, Terry, thanks very much. We're joined now by the woman who's in the middle of those hearings, Dr. Anita Hill, now a university professor of social policy at Brandeis. Dr. Hill, thank you for joining us this morning. I, I want to start out with what we learned overnight from Dr. Blasey Ford's attorneys. They wanted an FBI investigation before she testifies. Is that the right move? Should the Senate honor her request? Absolutely, it's the right move. The hearing questions need to have a frame. And the investigation is the best frame for that, a neutral investigation uh, that can pull together the facts, create a, a record so that the senators can draw on the information they receive to develop their questions. Uh, also helpful would be bringing in expert testimony or e experts who can help them shape the questions that they're going to ask. All of this is is really uh, is is really something that I, I don't think it can be avoided if well, you really want to get to the truth. You say if that, that's the purpose of this hearing. I guess that gets to the question because all indications now are that the president, the GOP majority, will not honor that request. That they will hold the hearing without her schedule of vote. So what happens then? Do you believe that Dr. Blasey Ford has a duty to testify publicly, even the, even if the conditions are not ideal? Well, we're not talking about whether the conditions are ideal. We're talking about whether the uh, conditions are actually tenable, whether or not it is going to be anything more than just a sham proceeding so that the senators can say, we gave her a chance to talk, and then move on to doing exactly what they were intending to do before she came forward. You know, your hearings famously came just five days after the allegations went public, and you wrote that that quick Senate consent to a hearing was actually quite cynical. I want to read what you wrote in your book. You said, I believe that the Republicans who voted to hold the hearing did so because they felt that the idea of a public hearing would be so threatening that I would withdraw my complaint or that even if I did appear, they would be able to destroy me. Is that what's at play here? It seems to be what's at play. Uh, it, it, it occurs to me that two things are going on, that either they don't take this seriously, uh, that they don't, aren't concerned uh, about this complaint, as, as, uh, as many Americans are, uh, and, or that they just want to get it over. Uh, I, I'm not sure which is, uh, which is in play. Maybe they're not concerned, or maybe they just don't know how to handle this kind of a situation. But anyone who has been involved in anything similar to this, whether it's sexual harassment or sexual assault, as being charged here, knows that these take time to evolve. Uh, so six days is not enough for the senators who probably know very little about these kinds of claims. It's not enough for them to inform themselves. And so that's why it's important to have an investigation. It's important for them then to call on experts to help them shape credible questions to ask both uh, Dr. Blasey and Judge Kavanaugh 
and then to move forward. There is no reason for them to rush this and push this in a, with a six-day time one, frame. One of the things you're the hearing... The other thing that I think that the senators are missing, just one more thing, because we're talking about an obligation not only to Dr. Blasey and Judge Kavanaugh as witnesses, because this will change the trajectories of both of their lives. It's already uh, changed Dr. Blasey's life. She's uh, been threatened and has had to move her family into hiding. But the American public really is expecting something more. The American public wants to know about what happened, and they want to know that the Senate takes this seriously. And moving forward on this at this pace, uh, with this kind of sort of black hole of a process being foreseen by many of us, we are really under the impression that the Senate doesn't take this seriously and doesn't see this as part of their core responsibility to uh, the confirmation one process, of, to the court, and to the American public. One of the things you're hearing from the senators and some of Judge Kavanaugh's allies is there's no way to get to the bottom of this. This was 37 years ago that Dr. Blasey Ford doesn't even know exactly where it was or what day it was, that, it, that the charges are vague, and that this might even be a case, they've said, of mistaken identity. That is not for lay per a lay person to determine. That's why you have investigators who are experienced in these situations. And what advice do you have? Perhaps no one in the country is in a better position to give Dr. Blasey Ford advice than you are. What advice do you have for her? You know, my advice, uh, Dr. Blasey and her attorney are working together. She has a seasoned attorney and she should be taking her advice from her attorney. My advice right now and my experience really is more directed to the senators and to the, uh, to the Senate Judiciary Committee in particular. And my advice is to push the pause button on this hearing, get the information together, bring in the experts, and put together a hearing that is fair, that is impartial, that is not biased by politics or by myth, and bring this information to the American public. One, one, one final question. You've said that uh, Judge Kavanaugh bears the burden of persuasion here. What does that mean exactly? Well, that means that we are talking about an appointment for a lifetime on this nation's highest court making decisions that are going to affect Americans uh, probably for decades, given the value of precedent. It is an honor and a privilege to be nominated and to serve. It is not an entitlement. And so a person coming into that position on the Supreme Court for a lifetime really has to have the full confidence of the American public. We need to be able to believe in the integrity of our courts, and that means believing in the integrity of the individuals who are on it. Dr. Hill, thank you for your time this morning. Okay, George, let's turn to the Supreme Court battle still. The president tweeting overnight, the Supreme Court is one of the main reasons I got elected president. I hope Republican voters and others are watching and studying the Democrats' playbook. He is now also closely monitoring breaking developments overnight in North Korea. Kim Jong-un making new promises of denuclearization during a summit between the North and the South. The president calling the news very exciting. Let's bring in Chief White House correspondent John Carl at the White House. John, so far a few details on how exactly the North will denuclearize. There are few details, Cecilia, but this does look like a significant development. The North Koreans have agreed to dismantle a, new, a, a missile test facility and most importantly have agreed to do that in the presence of international inspectors. And in a vivid display of the thaw between North and South Korea, the two Korean leaders say they will submit a joint bid to host, co-host the two, to 2032 Olympics uh, and they say Kim Jong-un has said that he will visit Seoul. No North Korean leader has ever done that. 
In terms of denuclearization, the North Koreans are also saying they will dismantle a nuclear test facility, but they are demanding reciprocal uh, measures by the United States. It's unclear what that means. So the bottom line here, uh, that we are a long, long way from denuclearization, but this does look like a step in the right direction. Okay, John, one other quick headline. The president also heads to the disaster zone today to survey the damage from Hurricane Florence. He's going to visit a Marine Corps base near Wilmington. Uh, he, I expect he'll do an aerial tour of the damage and meet with some victims, uh, getting a firsthand uh, a look at the damage down there. John Carl at the White House. Thank you. Michael? All right, thank you. And as the president heads to the Carolinas, dangerous floods are still threatening the area. 10,000 people remain in shelters in North Carolina alone, and the governor is urging them to stay put, saying it's just still too dangerous to go home. Maybe sees Eva Pilgrim is in Fedville with the very latest. Good morning, Eva. Good morning, Michael. Yeah, you can see this road is closed. It's flooded out this car here left behind. And it seems like this that's prompted the governor to ask people to stay put. You can see just how much water is behind me. He's not wanting anyone to go out and put their life at risk. Now, this, as the latest numbers have come in, 37 deaths across three states being blamed on this storm. Overnight in South Carolina, the rising floodwaters proving deadly. Two women in police custody killed, trapped inside after their transport van hit floodwaters. According to the sheriff's office, two deputies unable to free the women were able to escape, waiting on the roof of the van for rescue. In North Carolina, the relentless flooding spurring rescue after rescue. Honestly, I kept telling him, you know, if, if we can make it to sunrise, somebody's coming, you know, somebody's coming. In Kelly, North Carolina, the Massey family, we showed you their dramatic rescue. Hey, is there more than just you? Yes. Okay. Okay, your son's on back. your back. Okay, come on. Clinging to trees for dear life for five hours. Oh my gosh. I can't imagine somebody being trapped in that same situation. It's <laughs> terrifying. Mom Kelly, 35 weeks pregnant, holding six year old Cameron and four year old Celine tight on the rescue boat. I'm glad I didn't have to have a baby while holding onto a tree and holding Celine on my back because that would have been terrible. The whole family is safe this morning. Russell Davis made the journey from Wilmington to Burgaw to see his home for the first time since Florence. It's underwater for the second time since he built it. It can be replaced, but um, it's just going to be at a different address, period. Can't do this again. No, nah, man, no. Nah. And you may notice this morning, I'm actually standing pretty far away from the water. The reason for that is a police officer actually came over to me and told me that this water is sewage. Michael? All right, thank you so much, Eva. Even though the storm has passed, a lot of threats are still there. And Ginger, on the hills of Florence, there's a new system bringing severe weather to the Midwest and the Northeast this morning. Yeah, video out of Green Bay, Wisconsin this morning. Look at that, more than a half foot of rain prompting flash flooding there, and it's not over. We actually have flash flood watches from some of that tropical moisture from the Pacific and the Southwest, but they're along that stationary front and even the cold front that's going to come in. You could see not just really heavy rain, but damaging winds today. Your local weather in 30 seconds. First, the rainy cities sponsored by Breathe Right Strips. When nighttime nasal congestion closes in, Breathe Right strips are designed to simply open your nose right back up. So with Breathe Right, you can breathe better and sleep better. Breathe better, sleep better. Breathe Right. Surprise! You're waking up to sunshine this morning. Such a welcome sight. Temperatures out the door in the 60s and 70s. By lunchtime, a warm 82. Your 3 o'clock temperature, 85. It will be warm, but comfortably warm with some lower humidity as the remnants of Florence move out of here and our humidity, that tropical humidity, is out of here as well. 80 degrees at 7 o'clock for your evening plans. And guess what? We're dry tomorrow, Friday, and Saturday with temperatures remaining above average.
Coming up, a shocking story. A surgeon and his girlfriend now charged with preying on women, drugging and sexually assaulting them. What police found on their phones and why they think there could be hundreds of victims. And tourists behaving badly. The man caught on camera getting dangerously close to a geyser at Yellowstone, not just once, but twice. Stay with us.